what's going on guys welcome back to our let's play here on the bedrock edition now i have been doing a lot of work off camera and i did oh this place is so loud as well i did go ahead and as you can already see this is stupidly loud in my ears hold on two seconds for me to turn it down on my headset there we go now i can actually uh, hear myself yeah, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I knocked out the zombie spawner. Now, let me just break a couple of blocks down here so you can see what's going on. It's pretty much just a bog standard one. I've done an 11 by 11 spawning room down below, just so that they've got maximum room for spawning efficiency. And this is just high enough that it's not calculated within the five mob cap that is directly around the spawner. It's like if you have any zombies if you, yeah, what is it? if you have five or more zombies within a five block radius around the spawner itself, it will stop spawning zombies. These are five and a half blocks away, directly above the spawner. And what happens is that they all just get funneled off into this direction, into a water elevator. They then go up this water elevator, across the ceiling, and then they drop down. I believe it's a 21 and a half block drop at 22 the odd one here and there would die but yeah this was mainly in an effort firstly it is a much much quicker XP farm than the spider one and I've just been as you can see by my wall I've been here for quite a while doing just enchanting trying to get have we got any silk touch anywhere have I got a box for silk touch yes I have up here yeah, so I've been doing like a load of enchanting of just books because I ran out of tools to enchant. I'm just using the stone sword because, well, it just tends to be a little bit quicker than punching them. If you punch them after a 21 and a half block drop, I don't think it's a one hit kill. Yeah, it's a two hit kill for that. So stone swords are extremely cheap. I've got untold amount of wood and untold amount of cobblestone from the amount of clearing out that I've had to do. But this is mainly in the efforts to get potatoes and carrots which I have actually got enough of now and also I decided to uh, I didn't realize that you get villager zombies that spawn from the spawners because I know that's been disabled in the Java edition I'm not too sure if it's disabled in the um, console edition I can't remember to be honest with you but I know that they did disable villager zombies from being able to be spawned from the mob spawners have I got makings of oh, I've got some more stone swords in it. There we go. Let's just uh get rid of these guys just so that the noise sort of calms down a bit. I need to put in a function to be able to turn this spawner off. Like probably some redstone lamps just in the floor that I'll just switch on and off. But that is not what we're gonna be concentrating on today. Now, what I want to get done today is a villager breeder in order to start getting villagers on the go because we're in desperate need of some mending books because at the moment, as you can see, I'm still rocking just all iron armor and I would much prefer to have diamond armor and I don't want to waste uh, diamond armor without having mending on. So we definitely need some villagers to get some mending books so we need a villager breeder in order to do so that book was an infinity book wasn't it uh there we go got a few of them now yeah as you can see from the amount of chests and i've got at least one to three books in every single one of these chests already and that's not even all of the enchants that are there so we're definitely going to probably have to clear a little bit more room around the actual enchanting table. This is a new enchanting table that I set up over here. I've still got the old one over at the spider spawner should we ever need the uh, need for string. So that's all still there and ready to go whenever we need it. I've got this little mini smelting furnace thing just to uh, get rid of all of the gold and iron junk that sort of comes in with these guys. Unfortunately, there's no way of recycling the leather stuff, so I usually just throw it on the ground at the moment to despawn. And let me just run over to PR, throw this zombie flesh in there. Now, I did take quite a while. We have actually managed to get quite a few carrots and potatoes, and because I've been here for so long doing it, 
I've managed to actually filter out some villager zombies. So we've got what appears to be a butcher. I'm hoping this guy, he's just got a brown coat, so I'm hoping he's going to be our farmer. And then we've also got what appears to be, I believe they're called clerics. The ones with the purple jackets. So that will be our three needed for our villager breeder. Also off camera, I went ahead into going to the nether. Got some soul sand in order to grow some nether warts. Managed to find another fortress. And I've managed to create some slash potions of weakness and a few golden apples in order to transform these guys. So yeah, might as well do that on camera with you while I give you the update of what I've been doing. So do you reckon that I could get both of these two in one hit? Let's uh, get our golden apples ready. Oh, but yeah, I've got them both in one hit. There's one. There's two. There's our achievement, zombie doctor. And, uh, and we've got the weakness now. And that would be number three. So we're going to leave them all to uh, transform. They're going to probably take about 10-15 minutes to do that. Now, as you can see, I've just done very basic. Like, I use the materials that I got from clearing out the area to actually decorate it. So we've got our polished andesite as just our pillar blocks. I decided to throw some glass in here because I accidentally dug this out thinking this was all clear to be dug out and I had water come out everywhere when I was making room for the chests. But yeah, I ended up just throwing up another couple more of the andesite polished pillars with some glass on the front so you can just see them going up before they come and drop down. Um, did I pick up that random leather helmet or did one of them? I think they did. Yeah, so uh, I've just pretty much done standard same bricks and I've replaced all of the random diorite and granite in the walls with just smooth stone. I left the andesite, the unpolished version in the ceiling just well just because it doesn't really differentiate too much between the smooth stone so I think it looks fine. Now I can actually get rid of this thing here though. This is where I was actually funneling them out. I had water running along here and it took me a while to actually get them free. Uh, the first two I managed to get, I ended up having to kill because I fell inside of the boxes when I was trying to trap them. So yeah, that was not fun. I've been down here for a good fair few hours now as well. Okay, so they're all ready to go. Let me just grab these stone bricks to throw back up there. And once they're transformed, I'm just going to move them to the side. And we're probably going to have our villager breeder. Oh, look, they're all transformed already. Yep, that's our brown coat and that's our butcher. So one of them is going to be... Uh, if you haven't seen it already, I've literally just done a tutorial on the villager breeder. The one that I am going to be building in today's episode. And I'll put a link in the top right-hand corner of the video now for you, if in case you haven't seen it. But what I want to do is actually build our villager breeder here, which means I'm going to have to clear out the area. Probably Sherpa these villagers over a little bit, probably over that way a little bit while I sort of build the actual breeder. And then I'll have to get them all into place. But all of that I'm pretty much going to try to do off camera. I'm going to clear out the area and get it all ready to start building. And uh, once I've done all of that and I'm ready to start actually laying down the... Shut up zombies. Oh, that one was only one hit kill. No, nope, he wasn't. He wasn't. Yes, it's weird. I think it's because where the water source comes across the ceiling, they sort of jump up as they're sort of bobbing along. And if they jump up, they're going to be dropping from, I think it's like a half block difference. So, the ones that just fall down straight away, obviously are going to take more than one hit. But the ones that don't, and they jump up and they take the extra half a block of damage, uh, they're going to be the one hit kills. But that's how it comes I've had to put a half slab above our hopper. And that is just uh, sort of gathering stuff and bits that we need. So we've got a, fit, well, we've got a few potatoes and quite a few carrots. I'm not too sure which ones to plant for our villager breeder. I think I might go for carrots. You don't want to do both, I don't reckon. But I want to save some to actually plant up near our base as well. Because, yeah, why not? So yeah, um, <laughs> before I get too carried away, I'm going to get this area sort of cleared out. I'm going to get these guys moved to the side, make a little bit of working room for us to crack on. So I'll see you back shortly. 
Okay, so work has been getting done. As you probably tell, um, I've been trying to get rid of the zombies before recording because they are just like stupidly loud. So as you can see by my level, I've not really been bothered to do any of the enchanting at the moment. So what we've got done is I've got the skylight that goes all the way up to the surface and that will go all the way down to the doors down below. I've started growing the potatoes in order just so that we've got the full crop ready for our two villagers to come in when they're ready. Hopefully we'll be able to fill this all out before. Now the first thing we want to do is try to get this villager in that hole. I ended up putting him in a boat because they all got loose and they started running around the mob spawner area. And yeah, it was all fun and game trying to get them in. I'm hoping that this guy doesn't take too much damage when we get him down here. So let's just hop on down. Ouch. He seems okay, I guess. And um, let's see if we can get this boat. Thank you. Now, uh, hopefully, he should run towards these doors. Because they should be registered as a village. I just want him to get out of this corner. Go on, go back to your new home now. Now, I did do the same as what I've done in the tutorial. I put jack o' lanterns down here so it's all lit up. Nice and bright for this guy so there's no chance of mob spawns. And then we just want to enclose this guy in. And he should be all happy in there. So that is step one of what I needed to get done. So fill in this. Have I got any other random junk blocks? Let's just use some dirt. And then... We still need to actually go around and we need to dig out our two deep trench to put the trap doors down before we put the walls in and then we'll be ready to move our other two villagers in. Now I'm going to get the rest of that sort of dug out our two water streams either side put in and then I'm going to try my best to get both of these guys in boats to get them in here. And then I'll probably bring you back for when we're trying to move these two guys in. So yeah, see you back in a sec. Okay then guys, just trying to get rid of these two zombies before we sort of carry on. Because they're making stupid amounts of noise. And you know what, I could actually make this go a little bit quicker. And of course that's another stone sword. So get rid of these guys. Hopefully there's not too many here. It's only been about 5 or 10 minutes, so it shouldn't be too long. I really wish that they would bring in the sweeping edge enchantment from the PC, because I could just give one or two swipes at the moment and it would just get rid of all of them. And it would be a lot easier. I'm actually considering getting some sort of um, auto brewing system running down here, which will create the splash potions of healing. Which, because these are zombies, will actually hurt them. There we go. Oh, don't want to open you. Just want to eat some food. Just so that we can use our splash potions. Okay, baby zombies should not be able to get in here. So, I don't know where he's come from or spawned. But, yeah. They're being funneled out before they get to the water elevator. Because babies can't usually make it through water elevators. So I've got them going through lava. The only way that he's managed to make it up and over is if he was a chicken jockey. So yeah, that's probably what it was. what I'm hoping anyway. Okay. Um, so do a couple of these. And then just a few. Let's do that. Hopefully not kill these guys while trying to do this. Yeah, okay. So do that. I'm gonna need just a little bit more room. There we go. Now I have got a couple of boats on me just to get them into place. Uh right. Okay, you're in the boat. And now you're in the boat. Cool. So, just got a silk touch, create a little bit of room, 
and oh, let's get in the boat with you. Come on. I'm hoping we don't trample all the crops by doing this, but it's the only way that I could see getting them in here <laughs> without using water streams and such. So that should be that guy. He's in there nice. And then... Come on. Yeah, so it's quite different. It's been a little bit of a challenge to figure out the sort of dimensions and as to where and how to place this farm. Because the villager breeder, I've only ever built them on the surface. I've not tried building one underground before. So what I have got is I've got the usual water streams running around the edge. They are then lead into a very long water elevator, which is taking the babies once they grow up all the way up to the surface. So that should be hopefully okay. Let's uh, just fill in this cap. Yeah, I did whack a hole to the surface up here. And that was so the villagers would run into this corner when I placed the doors. Two of them did, but the last guy that I originally had in the boat obviously didn't run, which is how comes I put him in the boat. Just so that I had them out of the way while I was building the actual breeder. So I'll probably have to get round to filling that in, but no doubt I'll probably fall down that hole at some point, like I usually do. Okay, uh, we need some stone bricks. Lovely. There's a few more up and over here. Wrap some round there. Now I've put the half slabs in here. Just so that Enderman can't teleport in here should any spawn or try to teleport in here. Uh, I don't know if they would be able to teleport on the spots that I've got the glowstone at. As you can see I've got rid of the torches, put some glowstone underneath some trap doors. And hopefully they shouldn't be able to spawn in here. I know that everywhere in here is unspawnable so I've got one piece of glowstone in each of the corners. And we've got our trapdoors there, so then the babies think that it's a walkable block. Or a solid block that they can walk over, so then they'll just run straight into the water streams. Now we have got our way out, but we need to make sure that none of the villagers try to leg it out. So that's too high. That we should have a hoe on us to replace. And then, oh, I'm going to have to replant some of these crops after I get these guys out. Okay, that's one villager out. Hopefully he should start farming. Oh, come on, really? Okay, let's see if we give him a potato. Will he go and plant it somewhere? Unless he has to be loaded and unloaded. Is that a thing? This guy, unless the sort of transformed villagers just don't have an inventory that can be filled, is that a thing? So I've not actually exited or loaded back up my game since I've converted them. But this guy does not seem to want to be farming at the moment. So what I am going to do is quickly save and quit. Well, it will save up and then I'll reload it. So then everything sort of reloads in that area rather than me having to leave the area and then reload it by coming back. If I just uh, exit the game and then reload it up, hopefully that may fix it. And it will register the villager is actually being a villager with uh, inventory that he can start farming. Otherwise we're going to have to find another way of getting some villagers here. Because the only way that I can sit without having to venture on to further maps is by converting the villager zombies. But let's just plant all of these. And let's get our hoe out. Guy, okay, you're going to have to move out of the way, mate. Yeah, I don't know why this guy just uh, does not seem to want to be harvesting. Okay, and one, two. 
And then we can break them. Do that. Do that. And then we need a half slabby jabby. Like a so. And then we need some stone bricks. Like a so. And now we're stuck in the ceiling. Let's get our glass back out. God, these zombies are driving me insane. They're so loud. I'm going to have to sort of create a way. What I'm thinking of doing with this is putting a hopper minecart underneath the half slab with a hopper leading into a chest which will obviously have to go down one further and then having an optional uh, magma block there because the hopper minecart can pick up the items from underneath the magma blocks is that? No, that's just a glass float in there, that's fine I'm, I'm hoping this farm will kick into action at some point but yeah, well I'm sure that we'll find out soon enough, but yeah, coming back to this, this will give us the option of having this be able to just harvest the drops, and that way it will just constantly get rid of the zombies, because I can AFK here for around about half hour, 45 minutes, before there's like a good hundred odd here, and so much for, I thought Entity Cramming was a thing on Bedrock Edition, and I've had over a hundred zombies here and they don't seem to die. Each time I take damage like that by the way is because one of them has thorns on their armour. Let's get rid of all of these. You don't reckon that the farm is just like unwilling to cooperate considering that he's so close to zombies. Do you reckon that's a thing? Yeah well what I'm going to do is that I'm going to hang about for well, probably about an hour or so around here while I do some fiddling about on the PC and hoping that this guy will start kicking into action. Um, I really need to clear my inventory of all of the garbage that I've got on me. Let me go to this random chest. Just throw all of the blocks that I know should be in here. Which is sort of like our decoration or upkeeping sort of blocks. And the rest is all for here. Stone bricks isn't. You want uh, obsidian, wood, ice, rotten flesh. All that can come back with us. That can go up into here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. And then let's just pick up all of this rubbish. Get rid of these guys. Yeah, as you can see, there seems to be quite a lot of zombie villagers that drop out from this thing. Now uh, well, we've got to level 40. Let's just uh, throw all of these bits and bobs into here. All the stuff that can be smelted, including this random shovel I've got on me. And then throw these guys into our current trash can, shall I say, which is just our despawn corner. Okay, so what I'll go do, I'll go up here, quickly try to sort of just take the train journey back, unload and then reload the area this way. It's not actually that far away from our base, so if we were to go onto the surface, I obviously if this villager breeder does choose to start working, I want to create and build a villager sorter up on the actual surface. So, yeah, I can show you actually what I've done over here for the nether warts. So I've got the nether warts all here. Now I've got some hoppers underneath these pressure plates which are leading to a chest. I've got a lever lever here. I've got some lighting. I've got our little brewing stand. This is where I was just brewing the potions of weakness to transform the villagers or the zombie villagers. And then to harvest this, you just up that and then it will make the water come out. It will push it over down to the hoppers. I'm not sure if the hoppers will pick it up underneath the pressure plates. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. As you can see, they'll randomly start disappearing. As the hoppers are gradually picking them up. Or they're just falling into their stacks. And then you can just close that and it will stop the water. Nice. And then we just go replant it all. 
this was just one of them little mini farms that I had to throw in just to sort of prepare for today's episode because I wanted to get some villagers on the go desperately and I knew that there was going to be a lot of fiddling about sort of like side work like this I could probably make an entire episode about just making this farm and building it choosing somewhere designing it and whatnot but it just it did not seem like a farm that needed to be a whole episode based around because it's not that hard it's just pistons extended using a lever we have water sources behind it you lift it up to harvest and that's pretty much it so yeah also our cow farm i'm not sure did i show you the changes that i made to this i went ahead and i threw some wheat fields in on either side i replaced all of the random blocks with just stone bricks We've got all of our cows in here and we've got the seeds in that chest. Got some wheat in that chest for when I'm doing the harvesting and whatnot. And then I've done a couple more harvests on it and as you can see we've actually built up quite a lot of just uh, cooked beef. I keep on calling it steak but it's just cooked beef. And I really need to go and light up that area up there. Otherwise we're going to have some mob spawning issues. But before I make another cut let's just go see if this zombie villager converted to farmer guy is actually doing his job otherwise i honestly have no idea what i'm going to do if um converted villager zombies don't actually act as though they're normal villagers when they are converted because i i've done it before i've used villager zombies converted into villagers for doing stuff oh look there he goes so he is now happy he's harvesting away and he will hopefully start frying some potatoes after he's got enough in his inventory to the other guy we're getting some love hearts can we see the first offspring from our breeder come on what's the betting that is some stupid type like a nitwit that comes out oh no it's a librarian or a cartographer it's hard to tell when they're babies but it's just impossible to tell when they're babies until they're grown up he will eventually wander off into one of the water streams either side on the left or right or back and then once he grows up he'll get funneled up to the top so yeah that's all uh, happy days um i think we're probably dragging on a bit of time i was going to make a bit of a cut and wait for this guy to start kicking into action there that guy goes off running off the edge but yeah um rather than this episode dragging on over half hour 45 minutes like they have been i will end the episode here i think we've made a great deal of progress i'm gonna obviously be down here for a while let the villagers build up and then i'm probably gonna hop into my redstone test world and work out a villager sorter for up on the surface either that or figure out a way of transporting the villagers over to our man cave to actually sort them over there because we've got the sugar cane farm and stuff over there but then we've also got the zombie flesh here which we can obviously just funnel straight up um, we need to get some polish down the side is that right yeah that looks about right uh yeah I've, i'm really I, I don't know i've not my plans haven't gone as far as getting the villager breeder in for this episode but I'm quite happy to see that it is currently working and it's just going to be a bit of uh, AFK in sessions for me down here while they build up but for today I think that's going to do it and then in next episode hopefully I've got a plan together for doing a villager sorter but as you can see oh, a bit too zoomed in there as you can see we've made great progress it's the first time i've built an underground village breeder which i'm quite happy it's come out looking pretty decent as well it ties in well with uh our little spawning area and obviously while we're because you have to be within like 32 blocks of the villagers for them to do anything anyway that uh, when i'm down here doing the xp grinding and whatnot we'll have the villagers breeding which is sort of like a what is it two birds one stone situation where you have two things going or have your cake and eat it at the same time too one of them sayings though it's a case where that is very convenient to have them both in the same location 
But yeah, that's going to do it for me today. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode and I'll hopefully see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.